Now, if you follow my channel, I'm a huge fan of the Spectre line from HP. I like the Spectre X360, the 13-inch model I reviewed late 2019, one of my favorite convertibles in the 13-inch category. Of course, I reviewed the 15-inch last year, and I couldn't wait for the refresh here for 2020. So when I took delivery of it recently, uh, I did my unboxing video, check it out if you haven't done so. I came away really impressed and I couldn't wait to put it through its paces. And that's exactly what I did. Now what we're looking at here is a gorgeous OLED display, 10th generation processors. You're looking at really slimmed down design here, really thin light for a 15 inch convertible, but it also packs some power under the hood considering that this does have a GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with Max-Q design as a discrete GPU. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP Spectre X360 15T, all new for 2020. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell. This way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video. Make sure you follow me on social media, especially Twitter and Instagram. I'll post all updates on those platforms. And of course, in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP. I'm not being sponsored by HP. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own and no one is seeing this video before it's released. This unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from HP. Starting price is $14.99, although the good news is it's on sale right now with a starting price of $13.49.99 over at HP.com. I'll put the link below for more information. Now, of course, I opted to get the OLED display with one terabyte of SSD storage, 32 gigabytes of Optane memory, and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and that came in at $18.89.99 right now. So again, that's not a terrible deal, especially considering the power this has under the hood. This has the core or i7 1075H, which of course is a 10th generation Intel processor that has six cores, and I think the performance is very good. And let's not forget, this also has the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with Max-Q design, and that's a pretty good discrete GPU. We'll get into the numbers later on in this review. Now this time around, it's slimmer and lighter than last year's model. You definitely are seeing a smaller footprint. It has a premium all-metal design. And of course, it has that gem cut design. Love it or hate it, it's here. And it has a gorgeous nightfall black color. I think it looks really good and gives off a sleek and modern look. Now to put the size into perspective, here it is next to the Dell XPS 15 9500 and as you can see they have a very similar footprint in terms of size and I will be doing a head to head between these two in a very special live stream coming up very soon so you don't want to miss that. Now there are some key differences between the two, stay tuned for that live stream to find out. And for those wondering, here it is next to the HP Spectre X360 13T and as you can see there is a size discrepancy between the two. And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, they give you a full leather sleeve. That's a nice value add right there. And in addition to that, they also give you the pen. Again, no additional cost. All right, let's talk about ports, and I think they give you a pretty nice selection. We'll start off on the left side. We get your power port, an HDMI 2.0B port, a heat vent, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the right side, you get a micro SD card slot. You also get a heat vent, a kill switch for your webcam, a USB-A port, which I like to see, and two Thunderbolt 3 ports if you opt to get the one with the Core i7-1075H. That's a six-core processor. If you elect to go with the U processor, you only get one Thunderbolt 3 port. The other one would be a USB-C 3.1, so keep that in mind. Okay, let's talk about the star of the show, the display. But before we get to that, let's talk about the options you get. There are three of them. There's one that's a 4K IPS display at 340 nits. That's going to be the lowest cost out of the bunch. And then, of course, you can step up to the 4K IPS display. Now, that one is the low-power display with a 2-watt display that will give you really good battery life. You're looking at anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. And, of course, there's the OLED display. That's the one that I have here. I actually thought that was going to be the low watt based on information I received back in January at CS 2020, but that's not the case. 
And with that being said, this is an absolutely gorgeous display. In fact, it's simply stunning. What we're looking at here is a 3840 by 2160 resolution. It has really deep blacks, really excellent contrast, the hallmarks, of course, of an OLED display, really good color accuracy, and it covers the color gamut really well. You're looking at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, 97% coverage of the P3 wide color gamut, and 96% NTSC, making this an excellent choice for creative professionals that do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course video editing. And at 398 nits, this is definitely a very bright display. Not quite as bright as the MacBook Pro 16 2019 or the Dell XPS 15 9500 that I recently reviewed, but it's definitely bright enough. This is a really stunning display. And I love the fact that they slim down the bezels, especially the bottom chin, which is looking a lot more svelte than last year's model. And what it does is give you a sleek and modern look. Well, this is the front-facing camera on the HP Spectre X360 15T here for 2020. And it's a camera that's, of course, on that top bezel. Slim down bezels, by the way. I'm impressed with that. But I'm not impressed with this front-facing camera. I was hoping for something better this time around. It's a bit grainy, not very good. Uh, but it does have that kill switch that we do like on the side of the laptop that allows you to turn it off for privacy and so forth. So I'm not crazy about the quality. Uh, let me know what you think about the sound as well in the comment section below. Now there is a fingerprint scanner located below the keyboard on the right hand side and it does really work well, registering my finger each and every time I used it. It also is great for Windows Hello login and gives you a nice added layer of security. And when it comes to user upgradability, well, it's a mixed bag. Now, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that. Maximum of 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's DDR4, but unfortunately, you can't get 32, especially when you're doing things like video editing. It would have been better. So that's a little bit of a disappointment. But the good news is the SSD is user upgradable, although it's using Optane memory, and that doesn't give me the best write scores, although the reads are pretty good. So I'm not the biggest fan of Optane memory. Now we're looking at Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.0. The inclusion of Wi-Fi 6 is great. That means it's a little bit more future-proof than Wi-Fi 5, of course. Working well, the connection was good, good uploads, good downloads, and the Bluetooth connection is strong as well, always maintaining a really nice connection. So good on that front. Okay, let's talk about performance. What we're looking at here is an Intel Core i7 107 5H. That's a six core processor, a 10th generation processor from Intel, along with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It also has the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with max Q design. And as you can see from these benchmarks, it did very well in terms of doing everyday tasks, Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, all work great. And when it comes to video editing in Premiere Pro, it all worked well. 1080p video editing was very good, as well as 4K video editing. Now, if you want to play games on this, you can. I found the sweet spot to be 1080p, medium settings, and you'll definitely get playable frame rates. Games such as Fortnite, GTA 5, Apex Legends, Far Cry, New Dawn, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, The Witcher 3, and more all had playable frame rates. And that's thanks to the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with Max-Q design, the discrete GPU that that this laptop has. Now, when it comes to thermals, I thought it was pretty interesting. I was looking for thermal throttling and it didn't. And I noticed when I did my system stability test that the CPU under 100% heavy load would power limit. In other words, instead of the 45 watts that it's capable of producing, it would drop it down. This way it never got overly hot. This way it never thermal throttled. And as far as battery life is concerned, it has a six cell 72.9 watt hour battery. And here's how it did on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. It did seven hours and 10 minutes, which was not as good as the Dell XPS 15 9500 that I just reviewed or the Apple MacBook Pro 16 from 2019. Now they do give you a pretty robust 135 watt power adapter with a barrel pin connector and it charges the device in less than two hours. That's pretty good. Now, of course, mine is the OLED model. That won't do quite as well as the IPS versions that you can get this in, either the 340 nit version or the low power 2 watt version that you can get that gets up to 400 nits. That will probably give you the most battery life. That might be the one to go with if longevity is what you're seeking. And if you go with that model, you're looking at anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. That's certainly all day battery life. 
And when it comes to the keyboard, I actually like it. Good tactile feedback, good key travel, and it has a multi-stage backlight allowing you to get work done in a dark room and a dimly lit environment. All good on that front. Now, it also has a numeric keypad, so if you're an accountant or a numbers cruncher, you're going to like it. Some people may not like having that numeric keypad because it shifts everything over to the left in terms of the touchpad and the keyboard itself. So again, that's a mixed bag depending on where you stand on that. And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, this is a precision touchpad that works well with gestures. All the scrolling is working well, although it's a little bit undersized when you compare it to something like the XPS 15, although it worked really well. And when it comes to the sound, this is a quad speaker setup. This is audio by Bang & Olufsen with HP Audio Boost. Gets really loud, good bass, good mids. I think this is an improved sound over last year's model, and I'm really happy to see these improvements giving a really good audio experience. And since this is a two-in-one convertible, you can put it into the different modes. There's tent mode, great for recipes in the kitchen, consuming media, watching Amazon, Netflix, and YouTube, all working well. Same could be said for the stand mode, great for consuming media as well. Now, of course, you could always put it into the tablet mode. I find this great for use with the pen. Now, speaking of the pen, it's included at no additional cost, and it worked really well. Great for sketching out artwork, great for taking notes. This is a nice value add, and they also include the sleeve where you can store the pen. So that's a nice solution right there. Okay, let's bring it all home. Can I recommend the all-new HP Spectre X360 15T here for 2020? And the answer is an absolute yes. I love its stunning 15.6-inch UHD display that you can get with an OLED. That's what I did. Slim down design. I like its thinner and lighter look. It's improved keyboard with a numpad. You have a 10th generation processors here. Of course, it's improved audio. Really good battery life if you get it with the IPS display. Outstanding build quality once again. I like the fact they include the pen and the sleeve at no additional cost and it also has a pretty good selection of ports on the negative side the touchpad is on the small side and the keyboard and touchpad are off center due to the numpad some people may not like that but these are not any real deal breakers in any sense i absolutely love this laptop I'm going to give this a score of 94%, making the HP Spectre X360 15T here for 2020 worth your money and earning an editor's choice for the 15-inch convertible laptop category so far for 2020. I think HP's hit a home run once again. So what do you think about this bad boy? Yeah, the HP Spectre X360. By the way, I love the fact they include this sleeve, a place for you to store the pen. I really do like it. Now, taking it out of its sleeve, you can see that nightfall color black that I really do like, although it does show a little bit of fingerprints, but I think that nightfall color black does give it a nice, sleek, and modern look. Uh, I like the performance out of that 10th generation processor. I like the fact that we're getting good display options, OLED display on mine, a two watt low power display on a 4K IPS model, the one that has the 400 nits. And then of course you could always opt to get the 340 nit 4K IPS panel. Now, if you're going to be doing any kind of creative work through Photoshop, video editing, I would opt for that OLED display. It simply is gorgeous, covers the color gamut really well, really vibrant colors, really pop off the display. Great for those kind of things such as color grading, and again, Photoshop and the like. So definitely if you're a creative professional, that's the one to look at. Now, as far as the pen, it's included at no additional cost, as well as that sleeve, so I really do like it. Now, battery life will be better, of course, on that two watt low powered 4k display you're going to get around 10 to 12 hours in terms of battery life this model got around seven hours or so again not too bad for an oled display but again if you're going to need the better battery life look at that low powered two watt display model i know hp is running some sales over its website again i'll put the latest pricing in the link below where you can get more information and where you can buy it again i think this is a really good deal considering good horsepower good display everything you'd want in a two one convertible 15 inch convertible and that's why it earned my editor's choice because it really checked all the boxes but i'm curious to know what you think let me know in the comments section below so please hit the like button please subscribe please share this video don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below let me know how i'm doing let me know if there's a device or something out there you think i should review i'll do my best to try to make that happen don't forget to check me out on facebook twitter instagram and of course my website amdtechreviews.com so until next time this is andrew from amd tech see ya